And that might be the shortest tenure we've had in history. I'm not sure. Margaret, do we have some history on that? The shortest tenure? I think that might be. <laughs> that's something to be proud of. Well, that's actually more proud of, basically. Well, we waited for the regular meeting, might not have been, for holding the special meeting. The two hours ago. Okay. Um, and, and she's resigned for a very good reason. She's got, uh, I believe, was accepted into some kind of PhD program. I don't know if it was teaching or uh, or as, as earning one, because she, she is currently uh, an adjunct professor or something at, I think, Sacred Heart of the Family, one or two. Um, so congratulations, Jennifer. Their gain is, is our loss. Um, thank you for considering the survey <laughs> almost made it to our meeting. Uh, but we do appreciate you coming out and, and stepping up and potentially, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to review you in for other support and help in, in the future. So uh, not much to go on there. You can give no discussion. Can I have a motion? Sure. I move to accept the resignation of Jennifer Bernheim from the Marketing and Communications Committee. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jennifer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, now, uh, tied to that, uh, discussion decision regarding, regarding appointment of Peter Blau to the Marketing and Communications Committee for a term to end December 31st, 2019. Uh, Peter Blau is the next one, you know, with, with specific criteria to, to reach threshold. So we figured the most uh, balanced, empirical way to go ahead and do this is just to move the next person up. And Peter was the next person. Again, everybody was exceedingly qualified, so I'm thrilled he's going to be on there. Um, my understanding is we reached out to him and he's still interested. So, um, I, you know, we already talked to him, so can I have a motion? I move to appoint Peter Blau to the Marketing and Communications Committee for a term at end December 31st, 2019. Second. 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 Uh, not nothing to say. Uh, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Peter. We're looking forward to seeing you guys get done. Okay, now, agenda six, we're moving right along. Discussion decision regarding the appointment of Adam, Adam Tominelli to the Survey Research Committee. Come on. How are you doing? <laughs> Come on. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Come now. Nice to see you. I'm going to sit right up here in front of you guys so I can hear you. Please, and then the <laughs> mic can pick you up. Hey, Thanks, Jonathan. So, Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. So, um, I consider this a key, a key committee, and uh, you're going to have a lot of work in the next two years, is my suspicion of the Planning and Zoning Committee is going to do their own survey as part of what's called a plan of conservation and development. Um, we are either going to have some items on there or field our own full study uh, survey. In the meantime, we're going to have a lot of other um, smaller scale surveys that we want to be reaching out to, to, uh, to the public to get their feedback and then also find ways to push information back to them. Um, and I think we're all willing to sort of look at alternative methodologies like obviously pen and paper and phone and mall intercepts are probably not going to be the most cost effective or ideal solution. So, you know, whatever we can do digitally and sure. uh, figuring out ways to, and I've talked to the senior center about maybe putting a kiosk or something in there so that they can have the people who are going in there and right. maybe people walking through how to fill out the surveys online yep. and do the gate questions and that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, so, you know, that, that's all we're really doing. Uh, you know, your background is perfect. <laughs> um, you obviously know a whole lot more than I do about the area. <laughs> and I have a whole lot. So, <laughs> so uh, we're thrilled that you stepped up. We do have two more spots. Mm -hmm. um, after tonight, hopefully one more spot. Um, so, you know, again, thrilled that you're here. Yeah. I mean, there, there's two things really. One, there's this Marketing Communications Committee. Right. But we would be remiss if we just started off by doing marketing communications if we didn't do a little research. A little bit of research, sure. Yeah, and so we just kind of stacked the deck, you know, certainly with marketing communications, but also in, in research with not just someone like you, but another, I think, one or if not two other people that can, that can do really good research too. Right. So it's not all going to fall on your shoulders. Maybe this time it will be looking at an analytic plan, or maybe next time it's going to be helping you know, look at the data and I can help too. Sure. So it's going to be a pretty good you know, team of folks. Okay. That can, That's great. Yeah, right. and we need the help. Good. I can't imagine what it would cost to actually hire these folks. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're going to work up to the same level all of us. They can do it quickly without no, a The nice thing is, again, we do have uh, three market research experts if, if you're on there, and uh, Dave Muller, who's a former selectman, who's done everything in town that you could possibly do, who's going to be amazing for content and understanding 
the type of things we need to ask and how to un ask them and you sure. know, understand you the, the process down. So Great. I think at this point, I'm extremely confident in, in whatever you're going to you know, move forward with. Can I on to you too? You're, you're going to be our ex-officio kind of ex officio kind of hanger out or working with them. Wonderful. Yeah, not voting. I just can't vote and stuff. You just want, I'm sorry? I can't vote on the committee. Right, right, understood. So I don't be there to, you know, whatever. Right, right. And screw it up. You do know a few things about it, too. Couple. Couple. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very specific. Okay. I have no questions. Thanks for No, no. It's not a motion, then. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I move to appoint Adam Tominelli to the Survey Research Committee for a term. Uh, uh, for a term to end uh, to uh, December 31st, 2019. And a second, second. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 A corollary of that, um, item number seven, discussion decision regarding appointment of Maria Bukalaba from the Children and Youth Commission for a term to end uh, December 31st, 2019. Um, we still have one slot, although we kind of almost have two. <laughs> but not officially yet, but we do have one slot that's clearly open. Uh, Maria is stepping up. Say hi. Please record your message. When you finish saying what you're saying, hang on. Or press one or more. She told me to hang on. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. She's probably running. While we're waiting. Just stop one more time. Yes. Here. While we're preaching renewables. It's a little bit of a I thought it was kind of to go. It's a little tricky. There's like a line. Then you got to get the sounds. Of course. Now we can be truly sustainable. Who gave us these? Chris did. You did? So it was just liquor. You gotta check it. Just wanna check to see if it's liquor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, that is very. I have you to like that. You like that? No, no, no. Smell test. Smell test. Hi, Maria, is that you? Hi, Maria, this is um, the Board of Selection meeting. And hopefully it doesn't happen visually, so I really appreciate it. And sorry you're feeling under the weather. We appreciate you, uh, you know, being uh, conscientious and not showing up to infect the room. Um, that said, um, again, I also appreciate you being willing to talk to us when you're, you're, you're feeling under the weather. So uh, you are expressing some interest in the Children's Youth Commission, which is fantastic. We do have openings there. Um, you have been in town. You are already pretty connected with, with different uh, slices of town. You want to tell us why you're interested in this? Okay, you have any questions? Yes. I am currently the co-president of the Women's League, and I have found that now that I've been lessons for four years, I love the town more and more every day I've um, And when I was told about the possibility of this, I thought what a great opportunity to not only learn more about the community and what we do to help all of the youths that are around us, because they're, they're, the, they're the kids are the basis of why we live here, you know? The school is it. It's why we chose to live in Weston. And I thought it would be great to get involved in that and help in any way that I could to help serve the community and help the kids. And so, but the, so about the programs, the way I'm familiar with them is through the young kids, because I have young children. But, I've just been learning about what the commission does. It does so much more for us to walk with abuse and with helping families with parents and stress. There's just a plethora of stuff that that it absolutely So I want to break what you all to help more and learn and see if that's even better for the community. That's fantastic. And one area I think, you know, if if we do appoint you, you will be particularly useful in is I think while the uh, Children Youth Commission is chartered with, with 
uh, focusing on children ages 0 through 18, we tend to only hit the kids once they hit uh, uh, pro. And we, we right. haven't done a great job of reaching out to the uh, parents who have the preschool kids and that, who are, are part of the, you know, the, the mommy and me groups and that sort of thing. And my guess is that there are people who join the women league, Women's League when they just moved to town who don't have kids yet in the school system. And you may be able to help us really reach out to those people and find out what kind of needs they have. So I'm going to... Yeah, that, that would be... That would be... I was here when my youngest, my oldest, was eight months old and I was pregnant with my youngest. And mom, I was at the president at the time, reached out and said, come to a meeting. And I went to a meeting, quite pregnant, and loved it, loved the people. And it was what got me involved. And now we have so many new members and so many babies. And all of these women are in different preschools. They're not in that one preschool or two preschools. There are people all over Westport, from Fairfield, Reading, you know, a couple of Northfield, so they're really spread out. So I think that's a great idea to kind of tap into the, the young moms, to, with young kids, and young moms, moms, young kids. Yeah, so that's good. You'll be able to help us come up with programming, because again, we, we're not efficiently serving that, that cohort, and it would be wonderful uh, for you to come and do that. So, you know, you know I'm sold already, and we turn it over to my colleagues. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no questions for you. No. Thank you very much for volunteering. Yeah, 100 percent Thank you very much. Okay, well that says I can have a motion. Yeah, I move to appoint Maria Rao Robinson Rao. to the Children and Youth Commission for a term to end December 31st, 2019. Can I have a second? I second. Uh, any discussion? Thank you, Maria. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It was unanimous, by the way, Maria. Welcome aboard. Feel better. Feel better. We're going to put you to work immediately as soon as you feel better. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Bye. Okay. By the way, the public meeting has been working fairly efficiently. Yes. It's not bad. No. It's still a welfare. There's nothing to lose. Stage right. Uh, well, wait till I announce your agenda item. <laughs> Next item, <laughs> without further delay, is an update about the building committee activities with committee chairman Alan Sorello. Come on, Alan. Funny to meet you. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a long time since this morning. So that's the best way to go anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, it's your thing. I think mine is. I was actually in the Sunday. You're actually doing too much work for us. No, I love it. <laughs> they do the work. I just nod. Um, so uh, this again, it, it was part of an initiative we set forward that, that Brian kind of uh, you know, brought up and we all thought it was a great idea to just have some kind of regular cycle through of all the different appointed uh, committees and commissions to come by and tell us what they're doing, what they're up to, uh, give us somewhat of an update and uh, let the public know. I think it's a great idea, you know, that we have this kind of open back and forth and we keep on informing each other. It's, it's only uh, uh, it's, it's a better way for the town to work and allows for us kind of a synergy that will make things only better, you know. So, okay, we're involved in two projects, two minor projects right now. The one has been festering for many years, and that's what, what we call the knee wall project. I imagine you're all familiar to one degree or another with that. So, we, um, do, I want, do you want background on this? You just want me to tell you where we're at right now. I mean, I give you a quick, I mean, I'm pretty familiar with it. I don't know how familiar you are. Just uh, two sentences for the public. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. For the public, uh, the, uh, we um, we uh, realized that the uh, well, we we were we were informed that the knee walls were failing as early as 2010. The buildings were completed in 2005. So, after five years, we went through a round of uh, discussions with contractors and various other uh, consultants as to what to do. There was no conclusion then, so there was a temporary fix employed. Essentially, the knee walls are these vertical walls between the lower roof and the upper roof, and they were starting to bow out. Oh, okay. and with? Yes, with, with, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course, these needed to So, um, then there was a, a, a lag of about six or seven years between that point and the point 
that, it, that we're dealing with right now, which is the repair process of the knee walls. Uh, the schools took a shot at it, it's their buildings. We appropriated through the Capital Appropriations Committee uh, around a $300,000 appropriation to do a fix that was based on a number that a consultant come up with. It took a shot at it after some back and forth. Uh, I think they realized that the building committee needed to control this pro process because there was the lack of expertise in that area on that side. Uh, so we took the project over, we spoke with the consultants they had hired, we realized they weren't the uh, appropriate consultants for the project, we replaced them with, a, with another consultant who then uh, did a, uh, an analysis of the new walls and we discovered an interesting thing, and I won't go into depth about this. But the new walls, there are north new walls and south new walls, okay? Um, there are two sets of new walls, so altogether there are four new walls basically barrel vaulted roofs, knee walls, and another, another barrel vaulted roof, knee, knee wall. It turns out that after an analysis of the south side of both barrel vaulted roof, knee walls were failing, the north side seemed to be fine. So we realized we could get some uh, savings there by just dealing with the failing knee walls and maybe reinforcing the, uh, the north non-failing knee walls. In all cases, what we discovered through the analysis was that the wrong fasteners were used. Okay, they, the project wasn't on, overseen correctly by the, by the uh, architect or the uh, contract manager at the time, but the contractor himself or herself, they're out of business now, used the wrong fasteners. They were basically sheet metal screws the guy got out of his belt versus the screws which were properly specified on the documents. So it wasn't built as described. And because those were uh, very, very flimsy screws, any, any pressure against those walls just popped the screws off. In fact, we found a lot of them. And the knee walls then disengaged from the structure on the south side. The reason on the south side was basically because of climate issues and how wind blows and where snow collects and that kind of thing. Needless to go into that. So we had an appropriation of $300,000. We went, we bidded it out, we got three qualified bids. The, of those, the best bid we got was from Silk Town, who originally was originally engaged, engaged on the project, but not in doing the portion of the new wall that fell, but something afterwards. So they, they worked with us on a lot of projects in town. We have selected them as the contractor, and their base bid was, yeah, base bid was, I think, 228, 238? 230. 230, whatever, in, in that the range. And there were some potential ad alternates if once we get into construction we need to employ those ad alternates, which would raise the pro project by another, I don't know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. Well, factoring the soft costs, all the soft costs and everything, and one of the alternates which we really think we'll need, not the other two, were at three hundred thousand dollars. So we're at a magical number with a magical process. So bottom line is it's good we discovered this because we discovered that there were suboptimal screws in there and it's good that we're going in there to, to, to shore that up and that these those those fasteners will be replaced at all four new walls. That was the question. Okay. Yes. We're gonna do that as of And we're doing that yeah. this summer we're making sure yeah. that you have shovels in the ground as soon as school lets out yeah. and the anticipation is fully that we get this done by the end of the summer so that they can reoccupy the building. That's part of the contract. Yeah. Two days after school's out, they, they begin mobilization. Two days before school lets in, they complete the project. Now, who knows? It might rain all summer. We might snow all summer. You never know. Uh, What's the other project? The other, the other main project we're on is, is the uh, repair and replacement of part of the library. So, the library, just to give kind of a little background on this too? Just a little. Or just yeah. a little. I, want to, I don't want to keep you here for hours and having dinner with my son. We're in the middle of that right now. So, um, the, library, the library is composed of two different, actually three different pieces. There's, a, there's an older piece. We replaced that roof about seven, eight years ago. There's wood shingles. We replaced it with wood shingles. There's a newer piece of the library that has wood shingles on it now and also a flat roof, okay? We've done an existing conditions re condition report on both of those areas with H.P. Uh, Fishman. Is it H.P. Fishman? Right. And the, the, they did a very comprehensive report. They looked at the condition of all of those areas that we did work on seven, eight years ago. They're all failing. 
There are pieces of shingles missing. There's exposure to the un undercroft of the roof. The flat roof is failing. So the flat roof will be replaced as is with what's there now. It's an EPVM standard kind of replacement. Um, the uh, shingle roof, we, um, we uh, will be replacing with wood shingles as well. We have uh, two, and the reason for that, among other reasons, is that the building is in, in a National Register Historic District, which is run by the National Park Service. It's a contributing building to that district. There are uh, issues with doing anything to a building as a contributing building to, a, to one of those districts. And the main issue is you, unless you get approvals, you have to replace like with like, okay? You cannot replace like with unlike. You can't choose another material without their, uh, their um, uh, approval. In addition to that, we need local approval. The Historic Districts Commission needs to approve that as well. So we went before them last night, and they have asked us to replace like with like. Is, is no there other engineering material. problems with using other, other like this? Yeah. Unique structure, the sandwich structure of there's some stress scheduling and weight restrictions and so on. So, so the uh, so the, some legitimate questions and concerns were brought to our attention. One of which was the longevity of a wood shingle versus the longevity of, of an asphalt shingle. So, so we did a lot of research on that, and it turns out that several years ago, the uh, Western Historical Society replaced their wood shingle roof with a shingle that with a guarantee of 30 to 50 years in writing, with a, an actual document that specifies the kind of wood, how it's, how it's constructed, and all of that. And they, at that point, will guarantee it for 30 to 50 years. If it's not treated though, right? It can't be treated. Wood shingles cannot be treated, unlike the myth that it should be treated. Okay. The, and it can't be, uh, can't be power washed. There's a lot of things you can't do to it. And we'll have a, uh, a maintenance schedule that will go with the completion of the roof. So with the 30 to 50 year warranty from this company, and by the way, nothing lasts 30 to 50 years, but we won't be around to know. So the, uh, but, but at least we're getting a warranty that's comparable to asphalt. Okay, so that, that concern was uh, mitigated by the fact that we were able to get the warranty. If it's enforceable, but that's really it's a roof, you know. Um, sorry. Okay. So um, the second uh, issue was um, that, that, that were, was brought to our, our attention was that maybe we can just replace all, take all the roof, replace the new roof, the old roof, and everything with something like asphalt and metal. We've looked into that. Metal's more expensive, and asphalt is not a, uh, an approved product that we can use on the building and for its historic reason. Metal would be acoustically interesting. We could solve that. We could solve that problem. Yeah. I love metal, you know, but. But this is another problem. You'd have to go through historic district commission. It would be easier to uh, to uh, get convince them of a metal roof than uh, an asphalt roof. The problem is it's, it's a, a totally out of range of budget. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So it, you know, and they're, they're beautiful, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, again, it's, right. they are what they are. That's how they originally constructed. Their life is what it is. Yeah. The cost is somewhat more expensive. Uh, it's also the tariffs. Uh, are we thinking about sort tariffs? of Canadian wood tariffs that we're just putting in? Well, we'll go out to bed. Right, so and it is what it is. And the, at the end of the day, according to the estimates we've received from our consultant, we should meet budget. We already paid for it, so we've already got, we, we allocated the last third of the year. Yeah, we have, we have a budget, 250 I think it is. Yeah. And, and I, I think we have an estimate is 238 at this point. That's only an estimate. It depends on, you know, contracting and estimates are two different things. We'll find out. We'll hold them to it. Yeah. Um, so we want, we want to start that project in the fall, not in the summer, because we'll get, we'll get preferable contracting available to us in the fall. That, because the summer all the school projects are being done, because they have to be done. This doesn't have to be done in the summer. So those are the two main projects. We were kind of talking about all kinds of other things, like Stuff. We got the There's other stuff going on here and there that's very interesting. I don't think it's for this. Not yet. At this point. But, but there'll be stuff coming up that, that that's actually interesting, not just this kind of fix fix them up projects, which are necessary. Okay. So I, I, I is, is that all we're doing?
Yeah, so I think that's it. Any questions? Well, we've been talking about potentially expanding the purview of your committee to uh, include building maintenance, and I just wanted your thoughts sort of on that. I, I don't know if we technically, if we officially did it, we might have the ordinance, but in asking you guys to sort of take on more of a role in terms of, I mean, all these buildings, you know, they have complex mechanicals, structural things, how often you, you know, replace this, that. That's a good question. Look, yeah. at, look at the outlets, some of them aren't, uh, you know, grounded, things like that. You well, know, we've had discussions about that, and so building maintenance has a lot of different components to it. Uh, the component of day-to-day -day maintenance is, is certainly not ours. Right. We're not going to do that. We don't have the time. We're a volunteer group. No. That has to be done by awesome. people in town. Uh, then there are other kinds of maintenance issues that occur. For instance, uh, uh, example of air conditioning units being added to the uh, robot and to the middle school. And our, it, unfortunately, we've discovered that a lot of that's been done without building, over, building committee oversight. Mm -hmm. And, the, and it's been done expediently with a, a contractor coming in and just banging away at whatever they like to do. And on account of that, certain kinds of ducts and vents and positioning of equipment is, is, is really defaced the schools. That should not be done. In terms of that, we'd be more than happy to uh, ad advise and consent to things like that. Now, there's another level of maintenance, and that's the maintenance plan that the school is doing right now, the, the facilities. So we're working very well with the new structure of the Board of Education right now. Um, so we have Gina and Sarah, you know Sarah, right? At, uh, at all of our meetings, that where we're meeting uh, uh, on a project that has to do with the schools. And, um, and we, we are working collaboratively with them. They can't vote or anything. It doesn't matter. I don't think it doesn't matter who votes. But, the, uh, but at least um, they, are, uh, they know what their needs are, and they know our ex expertise, and, and we're collaborating with their needs, our expertise. And to that end, they're now doing a $100,000 uh, facilities upgrade the plan. Right? What's the actual name of that thing? The, the document? Yeah. It's like a 10-year... 10-year facilities maintenance? Facilities maintenance. Yeah, we did, we did the last one. The building committee did the last one. And we were initially shut out of, of working with them on doing the uh, upgrade to that. And, and now we're, we've actually become part of that process. Richard Wolf attends their meetings and attends their walkthroughs. And he, he then reports back to the building committee. So what we have done with the building committee is that everybody who has a specific expertise, Richard there, me in terms of library design issues and so on, uh, Dave in terms of roofs and so on, we all kind of become consultants to different projects and then bring whatever we do back to the whole board to, for further discussion. So I think that's where we stand on maintenance. But day-to-day -day maintenance, outlets and stuff, no, like that's, that's not what we do. Coming up with Oh, we should do that. Now we'll be upgrading the same yeah, Castle Blue. Right, we got yeah, to. that's what they're doing with the Castle Blue right. study. And we we yeah. potentially could do that here, probably right. wait till they do another study to get uh, some cost savings and do it. But we'll look at that. And, yeah. You know, yeah, we'll work on that. Okay. On the uh, library, if, uh, if you took the historical registry out of the equation, would you still want to do it with it? Absolutely. Yeah, the library is an important building. It's a late mid-century modern building, and in addition to that, one of its it's really parts of uh, pieces of significance that I don't think we've explored enough is that it was done by a local architect, and it's probably the most important piece in his. He's dead now, a number of years, but in his portfolio of work. So I, I don't. The building committee wants to preserve and protect buildings, and part of that is to get the air conditioning right. And, to get the lighting right. Part of it is to get the history right as well. So yes, the answer is yes. And I, I'm sympathetic to that. I look at the library very closely. I thought, you know, the wood roof yeah. really does seem like an integral part of that building. It does. It's a shame to do anything else except the neighborhood, which I understand more expensive. Yeah. If you take the aesthetic out of it, just hypothetically, would you still want to do a wood roof? Well, then it depends what the aesthetic is. You know, for instance, the aesthetic here required us to do slight roof. And we uh, had the, these arguments that went on for about six months. Slate, fake slate, asphalt, something else. And we, we examined every material and every option, cost, historic issues, and so on. 
and ultimately we, we did the bullet went with slate because it was appropriate to this building. I wouldn't want it to do wood roof here. I guess what I'm asking is from an engineering, strictly an engineering perspective, not an aesthetic perspective, is wood still the best for the library? Um, well, that's a really good question. It really depends on how the uh, wood is and the substrate to the wood are prepared, okay? Wood is a really good ma material when it's done right with the proper materials and methodology. If it's not, it's not a good material. Asphalt's probably an easier material to work with. It's more of a dumb material in a way. You know, what's more specialized, certainly slate is, slate will last forever, but it has to be done correctly. So, um, it, it's not an easy answer. Yeah. On the knee wall, you and I had this exchange last time we talked about okay. the knee wall, and I asked, you know, well, basically, is there anybody to sue for this? <laughs> and you said, you said no. Now it looks like you've kind of narrowed down what the issue is in these fasteners. Uh, you mentioned that the contractor's out of business, the architect maybe failed to do some oversight. Is it worth talking to our new town attorney and just kind of presenting the facts and say, look, is there any recourse to somebody's insurer? But the fact that the contractor's out of business doesn't mean that his insurance policy is there. also statutes of limitations. Well, we had this discussion with a whole group of attorneys, at, what, six months ago, eight months ago? It was right before the, the new board of selectmen. Okay, so we had a, 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 we had a, we had a group of attorneys in and had this discussion. The statute of limitations is not that clear, and it may not apply here, and there are certain state statute of limitations that are different that do not expire, okay? So I think I would take that off the table. If we want to sue somebody, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, you would have to sue the architect, the contract manager, uh, for um, not doing the kind of oversight which they were required to do in the contract documents. They were required to, do, to hire an engineer to come to the site and to evaluate what was, being, what was being done. They obviously did not do that. An engineer would not have allowed that building to have uh, gone forward with that. So you'd have to do that. now. We've been involved with suits with the people who would, who would have to sue again, and I don't. That took years and years, and we spent tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And I don't know what how that was ever settled, if it was, because there were other issues with the, with those architects that we brought we brought, we brought to court them to court with. Um, well, during the school construction project, there were people who sued us because. They, uh, they went into the project underbidding the, the project and uh, thought they'll make it back as an extra and we didn't allow them because it was a fake extra. And then they sued us for $700,000 and again into court, tens and tens of thousands of dollars. It depends on uh, where you want to go with this. Will you ever recover $300,000? Uh, and against what cost is that? Who knows? Well, you're, depending on what the contract says, you may get your enforcement costs back. I, I think it may be worth talking to the... Uh, oh, that's your call. Yeah, again, and we have, a lot of, we have a lot of documentation now. I, I, I wasn't in on the discussion. I was in the audience watching it, but you know, the Board of Finance and the several attorneys, um, and they did go through the discussion of it. They concluded at that point uh, not to pursue it, but if you want to bring it up with that, we'll certainly talk to them and see what we have and see what he thinks. Or maybe we can track down that meeting, and I could, if it's on tape, I could it was an executive right. session because there was a strategy discussed about it. it was right, so we can't go into too much detail. Right. But we can talk about it all the time. Or some of the programs that come up. Certainly we're revisiting if we can recoup some of the program. Margaret. I was wondering what uh, the ONG is doing with the project manager, whatever they were. Contract manager. See them. Do they have any uh, responsibility for this? Well, I don't think they have. But I, I, you know, you're not out just what? You're not out of business. Yeah, nor nor the architects. They're both not out of business. So, so uh, again, now we're veering into legal, which right. puts us in executive session. So it's, what I'll say is that we will discuss it, and if you want to be, you can discuss it. So I don't because we or we can have it as an executive session. Yeah, um, which might I'll be better. Yeah, with Jonathan, maybe yeah. Yeah. Right. And if you want Jonathan and I, remember, then we can bump it up to executive session and, and bring more. Um, thank you, Alan. I think you have a question. There's one on the library. <coughs> Is there a way, I don't know what our 
purview is to get the historic committee in as well. Because we spent a fair amount of time looking at a lot of numbers. And when you, even when you take about 50 years or 80 years and you net present value them, you know, the numbers are still glaringly higher for wood versus shit, for asphalt. They're glaringly higher. I mean, it's not even, it's a country model. And it reminds me of, you know, like the Washington Monument, you know, was built. And then they had to stop because they didn't have money and then they used a different, if you look at it, there's two different yeah. colors of, you know, stone in there. And I'm just saying, it'd be nice to sit down with the historic committee and say, what I want to do is wood. I don't know that we can. I just want to talk to them about it. But we had an extensive conversation with them last night. Yeah, I understand. Same, same conversation you'd like to have with them. Yes, We're sir. hoping that you would actually be at yeah, that. Yeah, I couldn't be there last night. For because that, because I, had, I thought it was a good idea to have your input yeah. at that meeting. Yeah, I wanted to. Um, you can talk with them. I know they're not going to budge off of this. Uh -huh. And, um, and they, just like they didn't budge off of the, uh, the slate on this building. Okay. Uh, they're just not going to. And, and at the end of the day, um, what, what is the cost saving out over all those years millions. per year? Millions. No, it's, it's not. It, it, it can't be millions. Not per year. It's not per year, but yeah. when you, if you come back after 50 years when we're all dead and gone, right. you'll spend $10 million on wood, redoing and redoing and redoing, and, and spend $5 million or something. Well, well, let's say the cycle here is not 30 to 50. Let's say it's 20. Yeah, because I don't think it's going to go through it. Well, let's say it's 20. And how many years are we going on? 50, did you say, or 100? Well, you go out, go out and need a number that's both divisible by. So, go out, and what's a cedar and what's an house cost? Only going to get you 22? Let's say, let's say it's a 20 to 30 differential. So, what is the delta? 60 years. Oh, go out 60 years, okay. So, we're spending $100,000 more on this project with wood. Yeah. Okay? That's for 20 years. So, it's $300,000 differential. Yeah, but you're going to have to do other pieces of wood within the next 20 years? Other pieces but of wood? But that's there, right? So, so, so double it, double it. Double, double that number, because it's the entire building. I, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not tens of millions of dollars. I just want to sit down with them and show them numbers and just have them right. look, at the, look at them and say, this is... Any work balance number, I said. That, that's fine, we can sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I think you could, you could go and tip Amy and them, or at least some of the ladies and gentlemen. I was at the meeting last night, and I think what you're saying is a very interesting and thoughtful question, but the point that Alan will, will confirm that they made last night, which was also the case with the slate roof, is under the historic district state statutes, economics is not something taken under consideration, period, full stop. Yep, no, and I get that, and I, and, but I'm asking for people in this time with an open mode of communication for them not to say we simply and I just want to have a discussion. I couldn't make it, it last it night. It came up last night. I know that, and, yeah. I, and I couldn't make it. So that, 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 just to you go. I know that Alan's not the condo. I don't want him to. That's why I want to go out of the way for you to talk to them. Great. You know, it's not fair. Right. I'd, I'd like to be part of that conversation if it's possible. Maybe we we'll just, just have him come on in. <laughs> and throw him some numbers. And yeah. yeah, it's not fair for Alan. I get this. Well, they're part of the, the circuit anyway. Yeah. Right? yeah. Basically, you know, I, I will say last night I attended the meeting and you know, I think one or two members said and the other didn't disagree that they just do not take into consideration cost um, in their factors Good. of what materials are suitable. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. So what happens when they when they um okay, when let, they, let them speak for them, but we're now going across boards and stuff, so okay. yeah, I, you know, I don't want you to be characterize and I say Alan characterizes it. So let's just let them directly talk right. directly to the board. Yeah. And you can be a neutral arbiter and because <laughs> I love my mid century modern too. I've got my Eames chairs and everything. So I know where they're coming from. Just want to make sure we all they know. Okay. You know, okay. Said that. Yeah. Cool. Late mid century Late mid century. Late. Late. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, Thanks, boss. next item on the agenda, discussion, decision to adopt the job description for the portion of a per diem dollar ride van driver. This is something we funded um, that benefits the senior center. Um, you want to, Jonathan, just yeah. update us on some of the language changes? So, um, well, I don't think we have. Yeah, this, yeah in, this, this is a new, it's a new position. It's a per diem position. It's funded in the, the, the new budget that was approved Saturday. In the past, when the Dollar Ride van driver was sick or on vacation, 
for whatever, the building maintainer from this building would vacate the job and go over there and drop it. And in my opinion, it was a real challenge for the building maintenance side to tell that person in the morning, hey, you're not doing anything that you were supposed to do here today, go over there and drop it. And so the remedy um, that was proposed this budget season was to hire someone per diem that's going to fill in on really sick days and vacation days. And so we took the, the um, full-time position, that job description, and just basically changed it up um, to just change the title, basically, and here's what we have. So we're, we, if you approve it, then we'll start looking for someone to do the job, and we'll, you know, we'll figure out a per diem rate. Um, but for someone probably who's retired who within our budget. Yeah, definitely within the within yeah. the budget of three thousand for the fiscal year for this position. Okay. So, you know, I, it's something the senior center wanted. It's uh, something that we saw about operational efficiencies, cost efficiency, so I think it's a no brainer. And also, just so you know, there was a position that was, um, we moved some scheduling around with staff. So there used to be some seasonal summer help, and so that's not coming in anymore. So really, it's been, that's uh, what we, we used to chunk it out money. We just shift it over, so yeah. budget neutral effectively in terms of this specific position. Great. I move to adopt the job description for the position of per diem dial ride van driver as presented. Now, second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Approved. Uh, property tax refunds, who would like the honor? It's, I think it's my turn. Okay. But I have one question. Are we right? Are the numbers right? Okay. Are we, I'm approving them. I believe they are. Okay. Okay. You're responsible. Uh, I call you, yes. That one's was to make sure that number five. Sorry, I didn't look at it before. Got it. Uh, I move to approve property tax refunds totaling $77,686.38 as presented. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, approved. Uh, minutes approval from April 19, 2018. I have a motion. I move to approve the unapproved minutes of the April 19, 2018 meeting as presented. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, first, like, I'm just going to keep. Uh, Quick, uh, our budget passed, which is good. However, um, not impressed with turnout, citizens. <laughs> I know for a fact we can do better with that at the polls. We all do. Um, you know, it, it was a $64 million budget, and we got a little over 600 people to show up to vote on it. I guess it's good that they have faith in us, but. Um, Let's, let's see some participation now, okay? Yes. That, that's all I have to say on that. Um, other, other stuff, um, there's a new plan coming out from uh, the Unification Committee. You've seen a lot of work's been done around the edge of this building. Uh, in the next couple weeks, probably, we're gonna see some amazing uh, designs come up with some of our new members participating strongly. Um, looking forward to it. And we have- Yeah, some new plan comes out in the front of this building and coming around this side of the Oh, great. It needs it. Yeah. A little freshening. And, and Tony did a great job power washing. Has anybody noticed? I guess we're really getting the nitty gritty now. Um, yeah. That's all I got. So, uh, again, thank you for coming out and being adaptable. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Thank you yes. for our... Oh, yeah. This is part of our sustainability initiative. We're going to lead by example. Oh. No plastic bottles. Oh, yes. oh <laughs> remind everyone. Shredding day. Saturday. Shredding day, Saturday. Don't miss it. And it is at uh, the transfer station, right? It's at Public Works. I mean, uh, Public Works. Right, uh, 9, 9 a.m. to noon. 9 a.m. to noon, don't miss. Yes, Margaret, you have news about the well, I just heard that Hazardous Waste Day had a higher turnout this year than last year. And probably more than the election. And it was, uh, well, when I got 1145 or 210, Really, really focused on That's great. Thank you for the data. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A motion to second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> no. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you all.
Thank you. Thank you.